Oh, right. Hello, it's Tim Sandal, back with you with another video. And this week's subject is media simulation trials. So without further ado, let's get into the subject. Okay, so media simulation trials, fundamental part of aseptic processing. Um, so we need to do media simulation trials because the products are aseptically filled and they cannot be subject to terminal sterilization. And this happens for pharmaceutical manufacturers who make products such as protein-based products which would be destroyed or inactivated by a sterilization step. And we need to do the media simulation trial to prove that we are in a state of control. And that's because aseptic processing is a challenging and quite complex process. So we use our sterilized bulk, our depyrogenated vials, our sterile stoppers, and we're putting all of that together under a grade A unidirectional airflow environment. And how that differs to normal aseptic processing is that instead of a product, we are using culture media. And this has the advantage that if there's any microbial contamination, then the media will grow. Okay, so the objective of the media fill is that the microbiological culture medium is processed in the same way that we would process product, starting from preparation through to filtration through the holding connecting to a filling machine and then running a film and this allows us to step back and evaluate whether there is anything we are doing with the process that compromises the sterility of any individual aseptically filled um, container so we could look at things like how well we set up the assembly the operation of critical equipment and how well operators are performing and whether a given operator is able to execute a aseptic um, technique under the conditions of an open door intervention and it also gives information about environmental controls as well do we have control of particulates do we have um, good environmental monitoring data which is why we should always run media fills under conditions of control. So for example, if we saw a step increase of particulates, we would need to resolve those particulates in exactly the same way that we would be resolving that for a product fill. Okay, so the value of media fills is that we can incubate every container and subject that to 100% visual inspection. So we can see you know, every single container, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 vials, whatever that media fill is comprised of. And we can assess the contamination rate, show best operator practices, as I've said. We're simulating real conditions, and we're getting far more valuable information than is ever possible with the sterility test. The sterility test um, only requires 20 vials, typically, sometimes 10 vials. And these are taken generally from uh, different sequences within the fill, but the chances of capturing anything is relatively low. The media fill gives us a greater feeling of confidence that we're doing the best practices. So when to do media fills? Well, the GMPs require media fills to be executed every six months, which is a sufficient length of time to show that we're maintaining control. But of course, if we've made adjustments to filling lines, particularly anything interacting with grade A, then we need to re-qualify or revalidate that line and we're into then doing um, three media fills. And also if we've had major contamination incidences, we're making substantial changes, we're worried about any particular factor, then of course we all can also trigger a media fill outside of that six month window. And we also need to make sure that we're you know, capturing everything that could be of potential concern. And the acceptance criteria for media fills is always zero. So when vials are inspected by trained inspectors, um, you know, they cannot find a single turbid vial because that gives us concern that we don't have sufficient controls over our aseptic filling processes. Good news is, is that media fill failures are incredibly rare. Now, the broth that's used is vegetable peptone broth. 
So that's different to the triptone soya broth that would be used in a sterility test and the similar kind of product with the gelling agents that forms the triptone soya agar. And that's because that um, triptone soya has an animal origin. It uses material from cows. And um, what we want to do is to minimize um, the risk of any prions being present which might lead to product contamination. So we use vegetable peptone broth which is derived from a pea protein and it goes through an enzymatic process using either fungi or bacteria and it's derived from Canadian pea plants if you happen to be interested in that. Okay so what else do we need to do? Well we need to consider what to include in the media bill. So we need to be very clear about what we're processing, what we're simulating why we're doing it. Is it routine? Has something happened? We need to kind of risk assess all the variables and kind of work out how big the run's going to be, how many vials, what run time, how many people we want to have. We have to capture shift changes because they're an important element for aseptic filling lines, not in the case of um, isolators. And we need to make sure that things like line speed, container sizes, closure types are either representative or they're representing worst case conditions. Um, and we also need to make sure you know we, we set the lineup as normal we're not doing something special for a broth we're doing something that is a representation of a normal filling process. We need to make sure that the volumes are sufficient now the only variation is if we have a product where we're filling the volume up right close to the top of the vial for a media fill we put a little bit less in and that's because we need to have sufficient oxygen to encourage the growth of any microorganisms. It's also the same for any freeze-dried products. You wouldn't run, um, you, you draw a partial vacuum but you wouldn't want to use nitrogen because that might inactivate any microorganisms that happen to be there. And also um, we need to do the full array of environmental monitoring and then we need to make sure that we're incubating that media at conditions that are going to grow a range of microorganisms, bacteria and fungi. That's why it's seven days at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, followed by seven days at 30 to 35 degrees Celsius as the optimal uh, media incubation regime. Okay, so we can't do every single combination. So we do need to adopt a matrix approach, get the pop cultural reference on the slide. Um, so we need to look at worst case conditions. So this might be things about the vials that have the widest neck diameter, the uh, slowest or fastest fill speeds, the variations in the volumes, because that's gonna determine how long a vial spends at point of fill, uh, to make sure that it's sufficiently long that we can do all of the necessary interventions. So often um, you put together a matrix, so it might look something like this, this is just an illustrative um, matrix, but you're kind of looking at the worst case conditions and you may well run those two types of media fills, smallest vials, largest vials, take longer to fill but smaller vials might shake around a little bit more, um, different height aspects so we can make sure that the air flows are sufficient around the needle to vial. Um, speeds as well and how long we're stopping for and loads of other factors and there's a few other complications and other things to consider but I wanted to do here was just to give you a flavour of the essential elements that go into media simulation trials. So and at the end of the day the importance is that the media fill gives you license to fill so that's how important it is. Okay, so um, that's all I wanted to get across. Hopefully this has been of um, some use and interest in giving the background to the importance of media fills. I've been Tim Sandal, and um, see you later. I'm going back for a siesta. <laughs>